information to you. We've had a, an individual in town that's been a problem, you know, screaming and hollering, raising his voice, vulgarities, that kind of thing. Um, found out today that he packed up his vehicle and, and moved down. So he is, I don't think he's going to be a problem anymore. So if you guys have any questions, we can talk about it later. But I mean, that's, I think y'all know who I'm talking about. So anyway, you guys have any questions for me? Uh, yeah, you've got Kurt's report there. Um, the, on the full new water line, it says Locust. It's actually Park. It's the one from the um, Just Love Coffee. Or, God, sorry, uh, the truck. Cool beans. So that one's from the Dance Price Studio across. The main sits on the south side of the road. And we had a full new one right the highway. So we had Mitch Clemens help us out with that. I, no, I meant right here. It says Locust. He means park. New water line. New water leak. It shouldn't, oh, be, east, okay. it shouldn't be 703 East Locust. It should be park. Gotcha. I'm sorry. The one below it. Yep. Yeah, they're both Locust. Um, so that's where that one's at. Um, obviously, you guys may notice our flower baskets, for some reason, a lot of them have died. Uh, we really don't know why. They're looking really good. Um, over water, too much water. Uh, we, we're still investigating who has any ideas. We're not necessarily green thumbs. They look good for 4th of July. I don't know what. I don't know what happened. There's, so. there's one that's still alive, but that one's hidden. So <laughs> yes, yes, there is. So it's hidden in the trees. Top of them. So I'm not for sure what happened. We've got too much water. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is you can put the moss on the top, and then you don't have to water them as much. So I think we're doing a good job. It rained too much. I think they got rained too much. People who plan and have them come look, or we yeah, sure can. Yeah. We sure can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I'd go if anybody in town has is any good with plants, we'll even take the baskets down if they want to look at them and he's got a green thumb. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah, take them easy. down and see what, you know, so we know for the future, don't water them as much, you water them too much. It was wind. Our guys, they don't know. They did what told them that's fortunate someone didn't make it. So My question would be in the structure of the basket. Obviously, the roots are in too much water for whatever reason. Which really surprised me. So the structure of that basket is you have this huge basket, and then the plant sits in there, but it doesn't sit over the bottom. So that basket almost sits halfway, and there's a reservoir on the bottom of it with a thick wick. That, so you're actually filling the reservoir, and then it's the wicking system that's supposed to wick up the water through there. So the wick goes all the way up into where the soil's at, and then in the reservoir. So I don't know if when they so planted them, the wick was improper. I, yeah. I am not a, I'm not even pretending to know. Uh, so other than that, uh, our guys have been busy pouring concrete and stuff today, so we've been coming along, and during the rain season, we've been uh, starting to paint, paint tables and getting them cleaned up. So. Andrew? Yes. Yes. My wife is a former floral manager for Hy-Vee. She's got a bigger green thumb than any guy I know. I can get a hold of her and ask her Sure. We'll take some baths and dances. I don't think I can make it to I I well, all, all the ones that are, <laughs> so all the ones that don't make it here this week or don't ever start coming back, we'll probably take them down, dump them out, so they're not dead and foliage and, and the weight. So because I'll be replanting anyway for next next year or whenever, so we'll take some down and we'll show it to whoever has any good ideas. Did they say how you water how you put in there? Or how, is there some kind of a Susan? Susan told us. Yeah, and that I, we just went off of what her so much in every week. Or I think it's depending on temperature, wind. I mean, you know, plants are in yards, and yeah. so we very well could have been the, the reason. I am excited to see the potential cement and pr uh, table in the park, in Children's Park. Oh yeah, that's, they're working on that today. Yep. Yeah, yep. That'll be fun. That'll be so, a nice place. And we're we'll park meeting tomorrow, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, activity this month, most of it, um, I think I'll probably want to discuss in executive sessions. We can push that to the very end. But uh, we have the, the trustees sale scheduled for the 107 First Street property. Um, I ended up uh, postponing the sale. Um, uh, there's a certain period of time that you can postpone sales without having to run notice again. Um, so I did a postponement to provide an opportunity to cure the default, see if the default's cured in that period of time, but otherwise, uh, August 9th will be um, the 
sale date, there was one uh, individual who showed up uh, who was interested in bidding, so I'll make sure to uh, let him know uh, what the credit is. The rest of it, uh, it had, then would be the session the the uh, Discussion of action, Mayor Board appointment, Andy Van Board, Tricia Scott, four year term. Tricia Scott to four year term for Handy Van Board. Second. Aye. Green? Aye. Jody? Aye. May. Aye. Number six, discussion, allocation of city sales tax So I talked with Kyle over Turf Auditor and he was in complete agreement with what Kyle and everyone suggested by not the time or the year and we're in a good situation to not not move forward on that. So he thinks it's probably not a very good political move or mm -hmm put on the ballot right now. So he said financially we're everything's appropriate and we can move forward with it as is if we so choose to. So you know, we need to do anything now just yeah we'll be done yeah we'll, we'll bring it up again in the next fiscal next yep. sounds good. We're kind of right on schedule. Number seven. Uh, are we actually tabling it or we're just continuing forward? Well it's just it's a discussion. It's 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 okay. So there's no action. And there won't be any action until next next year. Okay. Yeah, because it's in our it's in our ordinance. We bring it up every every even June, even year June. So twenty twenty six. Okay, number seven, public hearing, six forty five PM blight study proposed redevelopment area number two. Public hearing six forty five PM general redevelopment plan, proposed redevelopment area number two. Public hearing six forty five PM blight study proposed redevelopment area three. Public hearing 6:45 p.m. General Redevelopment Plan Proposed Redevelopment Area Three. That'd be you guys out there saying something. <laughs> do you want to open up? Do you want to open up the hearing? So we open up the blight study hearing for Redevelopment Area Two. Do the public hearing. Close the hearing. Open the hearing. Close the hearing. Open the hearing. Got it. Our decisions. I just want to do you a lot more time. Sorry. Just copy and paste for his book. It's not my fault. Call your senator. Yeah. I tried. He's busy too, what she said. <laughs> so at this time, I'll open the public hearing for like study proposed redevelopment area number two. Um, so uh, does, do you, does the council have maps of the area? Okay, so we're in proposed redevelopment area two. Um, just a quick reminder, so we are, first of all, if you don't, if I don't know all of you, my name is Bobby Pettit, I'm a community planner, um, I work in Kearney, Nebraska, and um, we were engaged by the city to complete these flight studies, so we are following community redevelopment law, the thing that community, that community redevelopment law is most popular for in Nebraska is every so often you'll hear references to tax increment financing, changing the TIP laws, um, people asking for TIP. Um, whenever you are utilizing tax increment financing, you need to be in a redevelopment area. A uh, redevelopment area, in order for it to be a redevelopment area, it has to have been declared blight and substandard. So our job for you was to complete the blight and substandard study. The criteria is laid out by community redevelopment law. So there's a set of criteria for blight, and there's a set of criteria for substandard. So our job um, was to go through look at the redevelopment area, look at the criteria, and then complete the study for you and tell you whether or not um, the area met the criteria of being declared light and substandard. Um, so um, I went through it, I would say, more in depth with your planning commission and you have a good planning commission that asks good questions. Uh, and they recommended that, um, just a minute ago, you might have overheard us, they recommended that um, we had that we would accept the blight substandard study and then declare this a proposed redevelopment area two. So um, if I have the study with me and we sent the study to Jeremy ahead of time, um, we had to advertise a lot for the hearings. We had one um, resident that saw the advertisement emailed us and requested a copy of the study. 
Um, so within the study, we have um, six substandard factors. Um, we have to find any combination of substandard factors out of these six. So when I read any combination, I read two or more. Um, we found three substandard factors. And then in the blighted portion of the study, there are 10 subjective factors and five objective factors. So I'm currently raising teenagers, and so I'm aware of what subjective means all the time. Everything means we could really, we could debate these and um, uh, we could argue about those. And then the objective ones are, um, the numbers are what they are. So um, back to the substandard, we found three out of six substandard criteria. In the blood study portion, we found six out of 10 subjective factors. Uh, the planning commission um, bucks me and I think they were right on two of those factors. So if we eliminate two of them, then we found four out of 10 subjective factors and we only needed two. And then we found one out of five objective factors. So I am telling you that based on the study, this redevelopment area to um, meets the definition of blight and substandard based on community redevelopment law. So the public doesn't have any questions, you could probably close this hearing and move on to the next. Proposal redevelopment area number two. Second. Aye. 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 Jody? Aye. May. Aye. So then do we want to jump down to number eight, nine, discussion action? On blight study proposal redevelopment area number two. Since you just talked about it. Sure. Okay. Make a motion to approve the proposed redevelopment area number two. Discussion action general redevelopment plan proposed redevelopment area number two. So, when we are the firm that's completing the blight study, I like to leave you with a general redevelopment plan. The, the redevelop, whenever you have a blighted area or redevelopment area, then you need to adopt a redevelopment plan to go with it. And then, as you approve redevelopment projects in the area, you would approve those as amendments to the redevelopment plan. So while you wouldn't have to have your general redevelopment plan in place right now, I think it's the best practice. Sorry, Bobby. Um, Are we supposed to be a public hearing right now? Public hearing? No, oh. we didn't. Okay. Yes. This is this different? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I thought we opened it. <laughs> no. No. This is so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so we're a motion for to general open redevelopment the general plan yeah. for yeah. redevelopment area two. Yeah. I'll motion. Second. Okay. So that if you if you have a blighted area, then um, you need to have a redevelopment plan for the area. The redevelopment plan has to get adopted and amended in the same manner with the with all these public hearings at Planning Commission and the Council. So since we're already here advertising for all these hearings, I like to leave you with a general redevelopment plan. So when when we leave you tonight, you'll have your general redevelopment plan in place. Then now you've got a blighted area, you've got a redevelopment area, you have a general redevelopment plan. Developers can come to you then with a, re a redevelopment contract. So the redevelopment contract is going to go through all the same steps. It's going to go to planning commission, and it's going to go to council. The redevelopment contract it gets approved as an amendment to your general redevelopment plan. So your general redevelopment plan right now has basic information in it. It has an existing land use map of redevelopment area two, which is current because we just did that for you um, when we did your comprehensive plan. Then it has a future land use map, so your future proposed uses in redevelopment area two, which is also then put into this redevelopment plan and taken right out of your comprehensive plan. And then it has a list of what would be eligible projects that you would do in redevelopment area two to redevelop the area. And within that list of projects, you are saying that you will entertain or you will consider or you will approve redevelopment contracts. The redevelopment contracts 
or what give you the authority the authority to grant tax increment financing for a redevelopment project in the area. So you are not, by, by approving this general redevelopment plan, you are not approving any specific projects tonight. You are approving uh, like a shell, like a general plan, so that when it's time to approve a project, you have an amendment to attach to that plan. So if you didn't have the general plan in place now, you would have to do that plan later when you are putting the redevelopment contract together. And so it would either be somebody from the city putting the plans together, or maybe your attorney, or maybe the developer's attorney. So I think it's just better to leave you with this general redevelopment plan so you have something ready to be amended. I agree. <laughs> Any public comment? Motion to come out. Come out of the public hearing. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Discussion action general redevelopment plan proposed redevelopment area T. Any more discussion? Motion general redevelopment plan proposed redevelopment area number two. to open public hearing for blank study proposed redevelopment area three. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Got it? Aye. Three? Aye. Jody? Aye. 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 Uh, we followed the same criteria or the same method as we did for redevelopment area two. So in the sub in the substandard portion of the study, we found four. We have we found the presence of four out of six substandard factors. We needed to find two. In the blight study portion, um, we found seven out of ten subjective factors, and we found two out of five objective factors. So I am telling you that redevelopment area three meets the criteria of being declared. A blight and substandard study. Any questions? Light study proposed redevelopment area three. Any more discussion? Motion. Light study proposed redevelopment area three. Okay, second. Second. Tyler? Aye. Green? Aye. Jody? Aye. May. Aye. Okay, we'll um, look for a motion open a public hearing 645 p.m. for general redevelopment plan proposed redevelopment area three. I'll make a motion open a public hearing. So the same applies. We have a blighted area. Uh, I want to leave you with a general redevelopment plan for the area. Everything in your general redevelopment plan is taken out of your comprehensive plan, except for those lists of projects that you will entertain. So you are saying uh, redevelopment area three. Like we prepared the field for play, so if we want to get into it now. Um, we're saying that we will. We'll consider it. Uh, I was wondering what, if you approve area two and three, what percentage it would be of the total town? Because there was a limit of 50%. Yes. So I was thinking if in the future, if you're now at 49 and you want to move somewhere else in the future and adjust it with an amendment or whatever, then you might not be able to. I don't know. Um, I I will look that percentage up for you and give it to you before I leave. Um, I left all my papers in Lowell's pickup truck, so I have to look that up. Um, but I will tell you that um, you do need to stay under 50%. So 
if we wanted to, we could, if I wanted to, I could look at all of Plainview and say that 100% of Plainview probably meets the criteria of being widely substandard. Um, however, because you are a city of the second class, you have to stay at 50%. So um, all of this started in 1994. So there's lots of communities that since 1994 have wanted to take um, have wanted to take areas out of a blighted area, or they've done redevelopment in that area and it no longer qualifies. So the state is the wheels are really starting to turn at the state on what process we have to follow to do deblighting. Up until last year, if we decided that we wanted to deblight something. Then the council just passed a resolution and said, okay, this chunk of ground is now deep lighted and we moved our blight percentage to somewhere else in town. Um, it's not, it doesn't say it in the law, but we generally, it's been a best practice not to declare something deep lighted if it has an active TIF project. So if you have an active, an active TIF project, the time frame is 15, basically 15 years. So if a redeveloper does a project in the blighted area, the increment on their property taxes, the increased property taxes comes back to them to help pay them back the cost of the development, but they can only do that for 15 years. After 15 years, the property taxes goes everywhere. So if we are still in that 15 year window, it's been a best practice to leave it in a blighted area. But there's no firm guidance on how to de-blight and re-blight. Last summer, when the um, legislative session ended, or ended, they did pass an emergency clause. I don't think this is an emergency, but they passed an emergency clause that um, you had to do a deep blight study to take it out of a blighted area. So we did that. I know it's job security for me. Mm -hmm. We did that um, for the city of York not that long ago, and all we did was we put a picture. We put a picture of the area we were deep lighting, the ownership, and the reason we were deep lighting it. A couple times it's because they had done a housing project, and the housing project was done. Was set, the redevelopment project was said and done, or they had decided they had sort of lost hope with that owner that anything was gonna happen in this area, or we're also getting smarter, and because the main incentive that we have to offer in a blighted area is a break on your property taxes, there's no point in having publicly owned land by the school or the city or the county or a nonprofit, anybody that's not paying property taxes, and they're gonna be on that land for a while, there's no point in having them take away from our 50% percentage. So, so we're putting practices, it's, it's coming around and sooner or later somebody's gonna sue somebody, probably in Omaha, and then we're all gonna know exactly how we're supposed to go about deblighting. And we're probably gonna have more public hearings and we're probably gonna send more money to the local newspaper. So, so there is a process to get out of that 50%. And um, my teammate, Doug Christensen, he did your blight study we, we split up and he went to Stanton and I don't have your blighted percentage, but before I leave, I will, I'll tell you what percentage you're at right now. Because now you do have three areas. You have your downtown area, which you already had, and now we have area two, which is on the north side of town, and area three, which is on the south side of town. I know we've kept you under 50% because we don't ever take a community over 50, but I don't know what your percentage is right now. Discussion action general redevelopment plan, proposed redevelopment area three. I'll make a motion to approve general redevelopment plan, proposed redevelopment area number three. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Okay, number 12, public hearing, 7 p.m. lot split. 33284 Plainview College Edition Block 36. I make a motion to open public hearing for the lot split 33284 Plainview College Edition Block 36. That's right. It's been second. 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 Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I started talking. Aye. 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 I see I forgot to ask the pack, this is my fault. Um, essentially, so this is the cell tower that sits north, and I can pass this around. This is the cell tower that sits north on um, North 7th, right to the south where Luke Jalowski lives. Um, Terrell Milburn owns all that block. Um, he wants to survey off the lot, the cell tower. Uh, the cell tower is gonna buy that chunk and then he'll eventually sell his other 
remaining two. A flat man stack. A flat. Um, so a US seller came to us. They we've been working on it for a couple months now. Um, they first put out one that wouldn't fit, wouldn't fit in the area. Um, they presented the zoning board today with it, or we did, and it meets the criteria, and they recommend it for a lot split on that, the cell tower. So it'll essentially kind of mimic the neighbor next to him, which is um, Kevin Jenkins, where he split off for Anarch Construction owns everything except for the cell tower. So it'll kind of match match that area. So I, I can pass the survey around this one. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry. How are you doing? That's right. Like, Zoning. So, I mean, yeah, plenty of cuts for zoning, but um, so yeah, pr pretty simple. Um, they're just going to own that little corner. I think 7,500 square feet uh, fits all of our zoning regulations. So, any public comment? Nothing to come out of public hearing. Second. No second. Tyler. Aye. 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 Number 13, discussion and action in lot split, 33284, Plainview College Edition, Block 36. Make a motion approved, lot split, 33284, Plainview College Edition, Block 36. Second. Second. Tyler? Aye. Green? Aye. Cody? Aye. Bay? Aye. Number 14, discussion and action, contract with Miller and Associates for upcoming sewer projects. Okay, so this is what we've been talking about. This is going to be the options they're going to submit to the state. Um, they think they'll be ready to help us out, so we'll obviously we have to do a contract. They don't do it for nothing. Um, they'll probably propose three options for us to look at next month, and whatever option we so choose, which is like the end gun option, like we've been talking about, um, that presents that to us, submit to the state, and then we'll finalize it. Hopefully, then we'll have a direction moving forward with the budget. So this is just a contract for them to fulfill their duties. Uh, Chris has done a great job. Chris Miller has. Um, he's easy to get a hold of. Um, he's been great so far. So we're trying to do this the right way. Contract first, work, and then get things done. So. I make a motion to approve the contract with Miller and Associates for the upcoming sewer projects. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Yep, yep. Uh, discussion action resolution number 705, possession of real estate, 304 East Woodland Avenue, and 7524. So I, Kyle, those went up. Um, this is because the remonstrance period doesn't get done until two more days, so we, did, we couldn't pass the actual ordinance for them to own the property. Um, but Kyle made this up so they have possession, and unless somebody comes forward with petition, which I haven't heard anything <laughs> down at all. Um, so this gives them a the possession. They want to actually start, hopefully, um, digging a basement here in the month that it works out well. So they're going to bring in Heritage home and hopefully we'll see a nice house there. This just gives them access to do that before we pass the ordinance. Well, and if somebody comes in the next two days, it will not happen. So with the proper position. budget for year 2024-2025. Yeah, um, that's been moving along. I know I haven't got a date yet. What kind of numbers are coming in? I did get survey from what they stole the neighbor survey from the other town. We have 19 towns. We'll bring a survey for for insurance, pay, vacation, all the above. It's a full length survey he did on us for us. Um, we've looked at payload costs already. We know that the pump for the back trailer is coming up. Um, it's going to be 50, 55,000. Um, we've essentially already taken off the mower because we're already starting to know that numbers have to be shifted around and make things pay. Um, so we're starting to narrow our budget down. Um, I've worked with the police for, for the office over there. Um, we'll be getting numbers for, for bids and everything, but essentially we'll be coming together. Hopefully, I'll send some notes out in August sometime for days that we'll do a, a hearing, not a hearing, sorry, a workshop. Um, I did go to the school board last night to talk about Lincoln Street, um, their hearing, workshop is July 30th at 11 in the morning. Um, I don't know what day that is. Tuesday. Thank you. Um, they told me that they will know on that day if we will move forward on the streets or not. We'll know if it's priority for the budget or not. So that'll be a big ticket item for us as well.
I know we come forth with the other project so far, so or options. So, okay. we'll look forward to that. Yes, and yeah, that'll be a big ticket item if they decide to move forward on their share. So, I don't know if anybody knows about it, get it out there, um, talk to people. Uh, they said they said get people to know about it so they can tell them if they're for or against it or or what. So, if you see your local school board member, let them know what you think, one way or the other. Is that the Lincoln? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the city's asked him to check in on both from pretty much gate to gate on Lincoln. Okay. And um, that's what they're going to be discussing about. So. Uh, questions. Okay. Great. Number 17, council comments. Anybody got anything? Number 18, public comments. Any comments from the public? I can tell you now. <laughs> So you, we have you at 40.72% is blighted. So that gives you, you can go up to 50%. So we think you have 60 acres left. So the total area of plain view is six, 647 total acres. Um, we've blighted. But the caveat, that it changes if we annex anything in, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we, we blighted things that weren't in city limits for the potential. So that obviously skews the number as we, as but, we annex things in. Yeah. But the number I'm giving you is just what's inside yeah. town. Yep, that's right. Yep. So it can be it can be if it's part of a bigger area. It can if it's part of a bigger area that is inside town. Um, it can be outside of town to be blighted. But if you're going to adopt a new redevelopment project, it's got to be annexed first. So we like to we like to blight as much as possible. It doesn't sound very good, but I like to have as much as possible in a redevelopment area, but still give you a little breathing room because we don't know what might be coming up. Hey Jeremy, on that Lincoln Street where that's not platted, do you have to do anything with that? It or? is platted. It is. Yeah, it, there's there's already an ordinance passed in 2021. It's already at the courthouse. Okay. It's done. I just yep. we were looking at that. Um, so I've been there. trying to get the county to put that on their GIS for the last two and a half years, and I've been there about four right. times, and they keep telling me it's they send it off to the third party to do that, and it hasn't been done yet. So okay, I just yeah. making sure. That yeah, it's, it's legally done. Yeah. So, but that's why they didn't realize it because GIS has G Works didn't change it. Yeah. So I said we had six out of ten under blighted factors, and most plotting was one of those. Yep. So. But we dropped it down to five and sent me through that one out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Thank you. See, yeah. Before you go, I mean, you can go. This is <laughs> <laughs> you are dismissed. Well, I don't want one of those speeding tickets. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm off duty. I can't guarantee <laughs> the other guys out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's there's no um, August 17th is the day that we are planning to have our bike rodeo. Mm -hmm. Andrew let to go speak with the uh, fire, the rural fire board to see if we can have it at the fire hall. It's, uh, just in case it's hot, um, last, last year I think we had to move it twice or something like that, didn't we? I think, so he's gonna see, uh, hopefully they'll approve us having it out there at the fire hall. Once we get that approved, then we're gonna start passing out flyers. So, it, he's doing a really good job with that, making contacts and, and getting that out there. So the chamber will be getting probably the fire tomorrow just to pass around to the businesses. So. A reminder for the fireman's deed for the council July 16th. Okay. So. This time we'll go into executive session, so I'd ask everyone to please leave the council chamber. You gotta say what for the right? For purposes of legal advice. Can we make a motion tonight? I'll make a motion to go into executive session for legal advice. Bye, everybody. Yeah. You're about to hear my puberty voice. <laughs>